used to dream about this day, being a medical school graduate and starting residency. And now that it's actually here, I'm just really grateful. I've definitely been waiting a long time for this moment. Everything kind of has been leading up to uh, graduating from medical school. So it's almost still kind of surreal. It almost doesn't feel real. To be able to wear the regalia of a doctor, it's just an amazing feeling. I am feeling so honored. This has been my dream ever since I was eight years old. It's a very, very big day for myself and my family, my wife and all my peers. And it's super exciting to be able to know that we're doing this all together, being able to graduate with everybody. It's awesome. I am the first physician in my whole family, so they are very proud and very happy about it. My dad's an anesthesiologist and my grandfather was a dentist. And so I'd seen the good that can come from medicine early on in life and was always inspired to follow that path. I would probably say at the age of six years old, I had a chance to see a sheep's heart in a jar. And that just amazed me. I didn't know what a doctor was, but I knew that that was something I wanted to learn more about. Ever since I was little, during Halloween, I would dress up as a doctor. I had my own little mini stethoscope. Um, I'd go around listening to everyone's heartbeat. Why did I want to be a doctor? I guess the main reason was I saw how much that physician can help people. I find helping people makes me very happy. And who doesn't want to go to work every single day extremely happy? Medical school was a marathon. The process of becoming a physician is very long, arduous. It's a lot of hard work. It requires a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice in your personal life. Um, but if I had to do it again, I, I would do it all over again, for sure. As I opened my email that I matched to a residency, I was greatly elated. So I am going to be doing a one-year preliminary general surgery position at St. Mary's Hospital in Waterbury, Connecticut. I matched into family medicine at McLaren Macomb Hospital, uh, which I was very excited about because that was my first choice. I match at emergency medicine in Centro Medico Episcopal San Lucas here in Ponce, Puerto Rico. An internal medicine program at Beaumont Dearborn. In neurology at West Virginia University. In internal medicine at Baptist Memorial Golden Triangle Hospital. In Florida at Advent Health Winter Park. A neurology residency program at Mercy Health Grand Rapids in Michigan. In internal medicine at the Wright State University uh, in Dayton, Ohio. Family Medicine, University of Arkansas. Just an internal medicine medicine at Detroit Medical Center. I start in a few weeks and i uh, nervous, excited, but yeah, definitely very excited. So I matched in pediatrics at the University of Florida in Jacksonville. Woohoo! I matched at SIU Alton, Southern Illinois University, and I will be a family practice doctor. I guess I am a family practice doctor. Woohoo! I've learned in the MHS that being compassionate and having empathy towards your patients, and that's something that'll take me forever. I have made some of the most amazing friends um, on the island and throughout this journey. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for the professors that, you know, I, that I received my education from. I would not be here if it wasn't for them. They allowed me so many different opportunities to explore and grow. And I was really able to diversify my clinical rotations and go to different countries, including Canada and Australia, which would not have been possible in many other medical schools. I think the fifth semester in Maine was amazing, but you're already steps ahead of like maybe like other students that did not have that experience. So the COVID pandemic was really tough for me and I'm sure a lot of medical students. I wanted to kind of reach my goal of graduating and matching this year. So, so in the end I made it and I'm really glad that I was able to kind of persevere and work through the that pandemic. My parents are very excited and they have supported me this, this whole way. My parents are so proud. My brother, he's also at UMHS. He's very happy for me. You know, they've been waiting for this day to come. <laughs> oh, my family is beaming with excitement. Uh, my dad is extremely proud. Growing up, he actually wanted to be a doctor himself, but at the time it wasn't feasible for him economically. So to be able to see his son, to be able to realize his dream, um, and my dream of being a physician, uh, means the world to him. When I made the decision to transition to UMHS, I think it was probably the best decision I ever made in the world because 
it's gotten me to where I am today and where I'm going with my future in uh, neurology. So I'm just so grateful. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would definitely go to UMHS. It was a personal, wonderful experience where I knew my professors and they knew me and they were rooting for me the entire time. So I am looking forward to be a doctor who's in the service of others, uh, especially underserved communities. And I want to thank uh, UMHS uh, for making me the professional I am today. It wasn't always easy, but it was, it was worth it. I just made some great friendships and connections with people, with faculty and staff that is just memorable and it just changed my life. And I'm so happy that I was accepted into the school and was able to call myself a graduate from this university. Although virtual, seeing that procession and hearing students share their thoughts makes today so special. It gives me great pleasure to present to you today our first virtual graduation. With the risks of large gatherings still a concern, we are erring on the side of safety. After all, as a medical school, how could we ignore Hippocrates' famous admonition, first do no harm? As you all know, this has been a very challenging and difficult year for the UMHS community. When the pandemic hit, the university immediately pivoted to an online basic science program. We substantially upgraded our online teaching resources, integrated a secure way to offer virtual examinations, and provided students with the academic resources necessary to ensure a quality education. We established a hybrid approach in our fifth semester so that students could still benefit from enhanced clinical skills and seamlessly transition into the clinical program. We developed online clinical electives and research opportunities so that students could continue with their education when clinical programs were temporarily suspended. Whatever changes the licensing boards threw at us, our students quickly pivoted to meet the challenge. This allowed them to participate in the match obtain a residency, and qualify for licensure. Tough times for all of us, but I have to say that our graduates were amazing. They persevered with flying colors. I know it hasn't been easy, but in the face of adversity, under the toughest of conditions, you have prevailed. Hard work, motivation, determination, and sacrifice. These were not mere words for you. These were the values by which you have lived, and they are the same values which will sustain you in your profession. I'm sure I speak for all your families when I say congratulations on a job well done. As our 12th graduating class, you took a leap of faith when you decided to attend this relatively new medical school. So I think it's appropriate to take you back in time to tell you about the person without whom this day wouldn't be possible. As many of you know, my dad, Dr. Robert Ross, was the founder of UMHS. While the school was new, Dr. Ross brought with him decades of experience educating students to become doctors. A visionary and an advocate, he took action to correct injustices. One of those injustices was the unfairness of the selection process for medical school. He saw that thousands of deserving and qualified applicants were denied entrance into medical school. So in 1978, Dr. Ross established Ross University. Under his leadership, and with the help of key administrators, staff, faculty, and family, he created one of the most successful medical schools in the Caribbean. Those were not easy times. Foreign schools were not well received by American medical establishment. It took many a battle and years to prove that our graduates were as qualified as graduates from American medical schools. And to prove it, we did. Today, thousands of graduates are practicing throughout the United States and Canada, serving their community, improving the health and life of countless thousands of patients each year. In 2000, Dr. Ross decided to retire, so he sold Ross University. But retirement didn't last very long. My dad continued to monitor the progress of Caribbean medical schools. In his view, schools were getting way too large. Schools were accepting up to 600 students a semester. Clearly, the focus had changed from a student model, where academic excellence came first, to a profit model, where revenue became the driving force. Unfortunately, 
that doesn't always equate to a quality academic program. So in 2008, he returned to establish the University of Medicine and Health Sciences. Unlike the first school we started, we now have the resources, experience, knowledge, and the ability to develop a premier medical school. Our goal was to develop a small boutique medical school, a school that catered to the individual needs of students, providing an excellent education in state-of-the-art facilities comparable to the best medical schools in the United States. And we recruited highly qualified faculty that would be dedicated to your success. We wanted an environment where students always come first. If you were accepted to UMHS, we were morally obligated to do everything possible to make sure you succeeded. Regardless of the issue, whether personal, financial, or academic, we were there to help support our students in every way possible. I think most graduates will agree that their fifth semester in Maine was exceptional and helped them seamlessly transition into the clinical program. At present, the fifth semester program has been expanded to include over 40 MD preceptors who not only mentor the students, but also fine tune their clinical skills. As part of the fifth semester, we've integrated into the curriculum a Kaplan USMLE review program. UMHS is one of the first foreign medical schools to offer students a live review program with faculty from US medical schools. We wanted everyone to do well in USMLE and pass on their first attempt. And we have succeeded as a result of a well-designed curriculum, dedicated faculty, integration of shelf examinations, great students, and a very thorough Kaplan review course. After passing step one of the USMLE, they progress into our clinical program. At the present time, we have affiliations with over 20 teaching hospitals located in New York, Connecticut, Maryland, Oklahoma, Michigan, Illinois, Georgia, Florida, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Our affiliation in Puerto Rico is with Ponce Medical School, a U.S. accredited medical school. Due in part to this affiliation, a significant number of this year's graduates have obtained residencies in Puerto Rico. In addition to our accreditations, UMHS went on to seek various state approvals, which added to our reputation and provided students with additional clinical exposure and residency opportunities. In the entire U.S., there's just one state approval left, New York. I'm pleased to tell you that we've submitted our application and anticipate a site visit later this year. Once approved, our students and graduates will be fully eligible for clinical rotations, residency, and licensure in the state of New York. Unfortunately, my dad is no longer with us today, but he would have been so proud of each and every one of you. Proud, but not surprised. He set the bar for establishing a premier medical school, regardless of its geographic address. I'll have more to say about the changes we're planning to make at the university a bit later in the program. What I can tell you now is that Dr. Ross would have loved to be here today to add his heartfelt congratulations to your achievement. I like to believe he's looking down on us now, smiling with pride. On behalf of my dad, as well as all the faculty, the board of trustees, and the UMHS community, congratulations. You're going to make great doctors. And now, let's hop over to Europe to hear from our esteemed provost, Dr. David Graham. Honored guests, president, vice president, deans, directors, faculty, staff, mums and dads, partners, wives and husbands, friends and relatives, and most importantly, graduates. What a wonderful occasion. It is an honor and a privilege to be speaking to you today. I am speaking to you today from the Liverpool Medical Institution, which is a World Heritage Site. The building traces its roots as far back as 1779, when it began as a medical library. I mention this rich piece of history because it is a reminder that the medical profession, which goes back very much further, is your chosen vocation, and you will be joining a long and time-honoured profession. As I said earlier, this is a wonderful occasion, and although we would all wish to be meeting in person, this is clearly not possible due to the terrible pandemic. However, 
What is important is that the achievement and the congratulations are the same, if not more so, given these difficult circumstances. I would therefore like to add my personal congratulations to those of President Ross and say to all graduates, very well done. You should be very proud of what you have accomplished. I would now like to say thank you on your behalf to lots of people. Firstly, to those who supported you before and throughout medical school. Your mums and dads, brothers and sisters, all of your families, partners, friends, boyfriends and girlfriends, thank you all. I would next like to say thank you to all of your teachers in basic sciences, the fifth semester and the clinical programme. I am sure you would like to thank them all and I am sure you will have some teachers you will never forget and importantly some role models for the future. I would also on your behalf like to thank all of the many staff, academic, non-academic, support workers, all of whom keep the show on the road and there would be no UMHS without them. To all of our faculty and staff, on behalf of our graduates, thank you all for your guidance, help and support. Finally, the most important thing I have to do today is to congratulate you on becoming doctors. Welcome to the medical profession. It is an honour and a privilege to be a doctor. However, you must be aware that with that honour and privilege, there comes responsibility. My friend and colleague, Dr George Shade, the Dean of the Clinical Programme, will also say something about this. In essence, on entering the medical profession, you must adopt and uphold the ideals and standards of the profession and at the same time, you must continue to learn and develop your skills and knowledge. You must become lifelong learners. Remember, you have graduated from a very good medical school and you must now take your knowledge and skills and continue to develop yourselves as you learn to be practicing physicians. If I could give one piece of advice, it is to remember that being a doctor is all about the patient. The patient must be your first priority. If ever there are difficult decisions to be made, and there may well be in the future, think to yourself, what would I do if this was my mum, my dad, my sister, my brother? Even in difficult situations, it will help you make the right decision. Give every patient your best and make the most of every patient encounter. Be both caring and careful and value attention to detail. Please remember, being a doctor is always about the patient. Once again, many congratulations. I wish you all well in your new careers. Go and enjoy yourselves and most importantly, be very good doctors. And now with some meaningful and heartfelt advice, I hand over to my friend and colleague, the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Prakash Mungli. Good day, everyone. What a special day this is for you and for all of us at UMHS. I was going over the name list of students graduating from the university. While looking at the names of each one of you, my heart filled with pride and joy. I'm sure each and every one of you take pride in your achievements. As you all know better than anyone else, graduating from a medical school is a challenging task and your presence here today is an achievement. What a memorable time you all have spent here at UMHS, especially your basic science program here in St. Kitts. Arriving to the island, leaving your loved ones, enduring all the hardships of medical education, some of you even endured hard mountain hikes with me as well. I'm sure you all cherish the time you have spent in UMHS for life. You have traveled all a long way during all the hardship to be here. 
Don't be content with this achievement. Use this occasion as the stepping stone for your future achievements. Be curious. Be curious in your professional life. Be curious to know the unknown. Be curious to find why something is not possible. Be curious to find solutions. Be passionately curious. Know that curiosity leads you to new paths. Warmest congratulations on your well-deserved and uh, success and my best wishes for your next adventure. Thank you, Dr. Mungli. Curiosity is indeed one of the key qualities we nurture at UMHS. On that note, I'm sure you're all more than just curious what it feels like to be officially designated a doctor of medicine. Well, you're about to find out right now as we begin the conferral of honors. This will be done in three separate segments with names read by Drs. Edith Young and Angel Matos. Dr. Shade? We will now bestow degrees earned by students of the School of Medicine as recommended by the faculty to the Board of Trustees. President, I certify to you that each candidate presented on the official graduation list has completed all of the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Therefore, in accordance with the will of the Board of Trustees, we are honored to bestow upon these candidates the degree of Doctor of Medicine. The candidates will now receive a diploma signifying the degree and all the dignities, rights, privileges, and protections belonging to it. Samir Aboud. Luis Acosta Class. Tanya Aguilar. Samir Ahmed. Amir Akram. Heba Al Sabah. Mark Hussein Al Hashemi. Ramez Al Hebshi. Franklin Alir. Paloma Alvarez Cordoliani. Sana Aman Jennifer Astacio Gonzalez Claire Balavender Jose Berrios Mendez. Gregory Brea. Joshua Broadman (laughs) 
Cheyenne Brown. Arelis Caldas Díaz Mario Candamo Cabello Marianne Canón Feliciano Alejandra Cardona del Valle Maria Kassain Alexa Castrodad Caraballo Yasmin Sherifadeen Sagvinder Chima Carolyn Claudio Vargas Ariel Collazo Lam Jose Alejandro Colón Rivera Llewellyn Cooper Juan Cruz Echevarria Sue Cruz Herena Steven Cruz Rodriguez Pamela Cuevas Moreno Suhani Dalal Giselle Davila Bernardi Jean de la Cruz Sarah Dobrazilski Adalgo Eberinga Sydney Edinger and Zubi Ekpanobi José Fabré Quiñones Paola Fernández Molinari Andrea Ferrer Jesús Figueroa Carrer Isaac Forger Angélica Fuentes Armesto
Esther Gallant. Dwayne Garcia Velez. Monica Garcia Olguin. Mohamed Daniel Gill. Renee Gladilin. Dinora Gomez. Stephanie Gonzalez Sanchez. Rainia Hanna. Brittany Hazard Bigby. As we all know, COVID disrupted the normal course of events and traditions at UMHS. However, being able to include family and friends in conferring the honors and witnessing their tremendous pride and love adds a dimension to the virtual graduation that is uniquely meaningful. Now, with that being said, hello 2021 graduates. This long awaited day that many of you thought would never come is finally here. It's amazing how waking up on a given day can change your life forever. Who among us ever anticipated on September 11, 2001, a day that started out like any other, that the world as we knew it would be forever changed? How would we know that on December 31st, 2019, in the city of Wuhan, China, that a deadly virus was erupting and by March of the same year would lead the World Health Organization to declare a global pandemic, the likes of which we have not experienced in over 100 years. There is no doubt that simply one day can define an individual's life or the life of an entire generation. Your class is the generation of doctors post 9-11 and the ones who have inherited COVID-19. The problems that graduating medical students before you experience will seem so minuscule in the face of what you have lived through in this past year, and that you will continue to confront for many years to come. In just one day, today, you will transition from a medical student to a doctor of medicine. From this day forward, you'll be called upon to remember, assimilate, and put to use all of the knowledge and skills you were taught over the past four to five years. You will be asked to build on this base knowledge of medical science and clinical training far beyond that which you currently possess. And from this day forward, patients, family, and friends will turn to you for answers about their health and the well-being of humanity as a whole. And so today, I ask the following question. Are you willing, able, and prepared to step up to this change in your world that this one day represents? That's really a rhetorical question because your whole life has led you to this day and this moment. You've received a first-class medical education. Never mistake that fact. But what you do with it will determine the impact you have on the world as a physician. If you use your medical education simply for financial rewards or personal glory, you will have denied humanity the greater part of who you are and who you can ultimately become. 
However, if you choose a selfless course of service to people, regardless of their socioeconomic status, race, religion, ethnicity, age, gender, or gender identity, you will become the doctor that your patients, family, and friends will love and respect. But more importantly, a doctor that you will respect yourself. I give you my heartfelt congratulations and my greatest wish for a wonderful career in medicine. A career that begins with just this one day, but will last forever. Luis Miguel Hernández Cobian. Laura Hernández Martínez. Kamal Kicks. Kyle Hill. Nisha Hollingsworth. Sanwer Husen Alexandria Hoy Saria Ibrahim Tracy Jenkins Ali Jishi Sakshi Joshi Manish Kanukunta Nicole Carmo Thomas Kowalski Divya Krishnan Kayer Karani Israel Laracuente Paola Laracuente Román Gerald Lebron Crespo Francesca Licandro Alejandra López Ramos Joshua Lowry Mohit Mahalan
Cristian Maldonado Crespo. Cristian Martínez. Annelin Martínez Rodríguez. Jeffrey Matos Suárez. Andrés Medina Bequini. Michael Mercer Quiñones. Gabriela Morantes Betancourt. Luis Muñiz Hernández. Fátima Para Noshat. Kim Nguyen. Axel Ojeda Cruzado Shivan Ombrigar Gerardo Ortiz Rivera Keishla Marí Pagán Morales. Mariana Pagán Rosso. Chelsea Patterson. Luisa Pérez Medero. Nuentan Pam. Kiara Phelps. Valeria Pierluisi Rivera. Alicia Kaiser. Saina Cater. Jan Ramos Bow. Gustavo Ramos Ortiz. Carla Ramos Feliciano. Daria Ravangard. Daval Ray.
Hello, graduating class of 2021. I'm Eric Mizuno, a proud member of the faculty of UMHS at the Weiss Memorial Chicago campus. I wish to add my hearty congratulations on such an incredible accomplishment. We are all so very, very proud of all of you. While we memorialize this important day, I wish to give you just a few pieces of advice. The first is failure is guaranteed. And I don't mean that to be discouraging, but it's absolutely guaranteed. Failure, it's just a part of life. Surprisingly, studies have shown that sometimes there's not a great deal of difference between those who fail and those who are highly successful. The defining difference tends to be summed up in just one word, perseverance. Sure, failing, being rejected, is inherently painful. That's why after trying and failing two or three times, some, most people, they just give up. But those who stubbornly keep trying, possibly as many as 10 times before placing their efforts elsewhere, these are the people who tend to succeed. So please remember perseverance. The old nose of the grindstone, just keep working away and it should all pay off in the end. The next piece of advice is my favorite. Never forget why you're in medicine. That's not a rhetorical question. It's a reminder. We became doctors because we want to help others. And with that comes great responsibility. Patients share with us the things that they're often, the things that they're most afraid of, the things that they're most embarrassed about. So much so that they dare not share these things with anyone but us. And the reason they confide in us is not necessarily because of our continuing to study the latest developments in medicine, nor do they place their faith in us simply because of our technologies like MRIs or CT scans, antibiotics, chemotherapy, or monoclonal antibody therapy. These are all givens that they should expect. The reason they confide in us is because of our humanity that will be discreet and compassionate, that we are fully invested in their outcome, that we are all in with not just how they are doing, but how they're going to do. Here's a quote to keep in mind from the great Sir William Osler, one of the founders of Baltimore's world-renowned Johns Hopkins Hospital. The good physician treats the disease. The great physician treats the patient who has the disease. A good maxim to keep in mind as you set out on your lifelong journey in this wonderful career that we call medicine. Once again, I congratulate all of you on such a monumental achievement. I wish you all Godspeed as you now pursue postgraduate medical training and God bless all of you. Ahmad Rafai. Kristen Richard. Andrea Rios Falcón. Victor C. Rivera Hernández. Natalie Rivera Matos. Susana Rocha. Gian Rodriguez Cordero. Natalia Rodriguez Martino.
Adriana Román Soto. Luis Rosa Benique. Amanda Rosenfeld. Alejandra Salas Sola. Idalis Sánchez Vélez. Natasha Santiago Santos. Kwaku Sarpong. Yarelis Segui. Arelis Sejo Lebron. Katika Sharma Shilpi Sharma Tanuk Sharma Hussein Shukar Angela Silverfield. Crescenta Simon. Valeria Soto Martinez. Marjolaine Suarez Ratcliffe. Alukia Suleiman. Nada Sarah Kick Venus Swearingen Fatumata Silla Wilmer Omar Takurante Vélez Manush Tahari Ana Torres Bregón
Laura Torres Cruz. Nicole Torres Rivera. Noel Torres Santiago. Marisol Trejos. Samuel Urrutia Fraguada. Eva Barocua. Angélica Vázquez Colón. Maricel Vázquez Delgado. Paola Vázquez Fernández. Enrique Vázquez Méndez. Juan Vigo Matos. Peter Watts. Diana Wilmoth. Ka Ki Daniel Yuan. Nairim Christina Sayas Schultz. We would also like to recognize these graduates from the class of 2020. Lorelis Arroyo Rivera. Braden Irving. Jaca Marin Alvarez. Karinet Montero Diaz. As a UMHS family is painfully aware, there is one very deserving student who should be here with us today. Earlier this year, Neetha Thomas tragically died in a motor vehicle accident. Let me take a moment to tell you about this exceptional young lady. Popular, friendly, hardworking, motivated, compassionate, dedicated, just some of the words that only begins to describe Neetha. Growing up in India, she was deeply affected by the poverty and lack of available health care. While so many others simply avert their eyes, Neetha stepped up. She spent summer vacations volunteering at a school for underprivileged children. When one student was struck with a deadly medical condition, Neetha helped raise the money for the surgery that saved that child's life. She was always looking for ways to help others. Neetha believed that by becoming a doctor, she could realize her dream of making the world a better place. There's no telling how great an impact she would have made. Her death is a great loss for the medical community and a greater loss for all of us who knew and loved her. Neetha would have made a wonderful doctor. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty and administration, we do hereby confer the degree of Doctor of Medicine to Neetha Thomas and we will present the diploma signifying the degree to her family. 
Founding Provost Dr. William Thurman made an enormous contribution to the creation and development of UMHS. His spirit of professionalism, along with a clear student-centered approach, lives on and is part of the UMHS ethos. Dr. Thurman loved medicine and always inspired students to greatness. To honor his memory and lasting impact on our university's standards and culture, the Board of Trustees established a Dr. William Thurman Scholarship for Academic Excellence. This scholarship is awarded to exemplary students who demonstrate academic excellence during their clinical semesters. It is my pleasure to announce that this year's recipient of the Dr. William Thurman Scholarship for Academic Excellence is Dr. Josh Broadman. In recognition of demonstrating the highest academic achievements, we are pleased to award Dr. Broadman this scholarship of $2,500. Job well done. Hello, President Ross, faculty, families, friends, and honored graduates. I don't have enough words to express my gratitude for the chance to speak with you on this special day. Being able to talk to you through a computer, iPhone, or tablet screen has always been a dream of mine. I'm tempted to ask you to like and subscribe to my channel, but that's not why we're here today. We are here to celebrate everyone's incredible accomplishment of finally becoming a doctor. Whether you are continuing on to residency, taking a break to apply next year, or even if you've decided that medicine isn't for you, Today is still a day to celebrate your incredible four-year commitment to the field of medicine. You are now a doctor, whether you like it or not, and it is an honor to be able to speak to you all today. Thank you very much. I want to start off by saying congratulations to you all. You did it. You made it here. Virtually, that is. I hope that you can take a moment to realize what an accomplishment it is to have finished this roller coaster of a ride. I don't want to spend too much time on the hardships many of us had to go through in the past four years, as this is a time for celebration. It has been a journey filled with uncertainty, sadness, loss, and stress at an immeasurable level, and we overcame it all. I hope you are aware of this incredible feat, one you should be beyond proud of. Know that your professors, friends, family, and loved ones all are. I think it's important to highlight how incredible it is that we can live in a world where we can connect virtually for such a momentous occasion. The only downside will be the inevitable reruns of us accepting our diplomas over and over again at the dining room table at future holiday dinners. We also all avoided the fighting that may have come with deciding who would get the limited tickets to attend today's ceremony had it been in person. So hello to all the extended family members who get to watch you today. I know I have family watching from multiple continents, including in Africa, so hello fam. Most importantly, we get to participate in this beautiful ceremony from home on the couch, in sweats, with a beer in hand, and no one will judge us for it. I wanted to use this time to talk about the most important thing I learned in medical school. Sorry, Dr. Mungli, it wasn't about glycolysis. And no, Dr. Last, it definitely wasn't about the effects of caffeine on cyclic AMP. And no, I know you're all thinking it. It wasn't coronavirus, Professor Jalan. Actually, that was pretty important. However, the most important thing I learned was how to ask for help and that this journey into medicine is not a solo journey. Unless you're going into radiology, then it kind of is a solo journey. When I started medical school four years ago, I had the mindset that I'd be going to battle alone. I didn't know anyone and I was hyper-focused on my goal of succeeding academically, and that was it. In those first months, you could have handed me a beer and it was sat in my fridge for four months, untouched. Or possibly been stolen by my roommate and I would have never noticed. My scooter that was stolen, that I did notice, but I had no time to care about. Movie night, not a chance. In those first few months, it was more like memorize every bone, artery, and vein for four hours straight until I passed out. Food? Yes, of course I ate. My diet consisted mostly of Red Bulls and Dr. Last Cell Bio notes for breakfast. But seriously, if you were to ask anyone in my network of friends, they would tell you that I was focused on one thing and one thing only. Do well in school, graduate from basic sciences, and then complete medical school. Now, while some of you might say, 
Well, Josh, isn't that the point of medical school? I would say, yes, technically it is. However, it's more than that. I spent my first semester focused on that goal, but it was also in these first few months where I almost quit from burnout. So what stopped me from quitting and moving back to Canada to where I would maybe go on to own a maple syrup manufacturing company? Aside from my beautiful, supportive wife, it was the realization that I was not alone in the journey. That my classmates and my UMHS peers were going through all the same struggles as I was. I learned to ask for help when I didn't understand something and discovered that no matter which professor or classmate I sought out, all were more than willing to help, be of help. I also learned to voice my concerns over a glaring issue in class and that it's okay to whine and complain endlessly with your friends for two hours straight instead of studying. It was then when I realized that I was not in this battle alone, but I was, that I was surrounded by my trusted comrades, all of whom had become my new family and were all headed towards the same finish line. It was this realization that allowed me to persevere and attain academic success, and more importantly, maintain my mental well-being. As I look back out through my screen, I am so happy that each and every one of you have also found a way to get through your own personal med school journeys. As we prepare to embark on the next chapter, I would like to pay tribute to our very own UMHS doctors and all those have, who have come before. We are following in their footsteps of the doctors who taught us and who had taught them and so on. They have shared their stories and their passions. Their wisdom is now ours. It is our time now to leave the building, in this case, our homes, condos, apartments, and perhaps tents, and make a difference. It is not the time to put the brakes on, but to bring forth our knowledge, our passion, our curiosity to the next generation. Remember to be courageous. Remember to listen, really, really listen. Listen to your patients and their families. Find a way each and every day to try to bring a smile or a laugh to your patients. Your show of caring and empathy can make all the difference between well and not well. And remember what Hippocrates had said, sometimes the human touch is the best medicine. One last thing, I always promised my mom that if I made it onto the stage at the Grammys or Oscars that I'd give her a shout out. So thanks mom. Congratulations to this entire class. We did it. Thank you, Dr. Broadman. We will now ask the graduates of the School of Medicine to recite the Hippocratic Oath. As we recite this modernized version of an ancient oath, I ask that we keep in mind its significance. The oath was first administered by Hippocrates to remind those who bear the title physician that their fellows hold them in special esteem and bestow upon them a special sense of trust. So it still is today, into your hands, your patients will place their most treasured possessions, health, happiness, and life itself. Their own and the health, happiness, and lives of their loved ones. Dr. Broadman, join us again as we begin recitation of the oath. I solemnly swear by all that I hold dear. I solemnly swear by all that I hold dear. That I will carry out to the best of my ability and judgment. The duties and responsibilities incumbent upon one practice the profession of medicine. I will abstain from any act, either by omission or commission, that could harm those I serve. And never will I betray. The confidence of those who place their trust in me. In order to serve my patients, I commit myself to a lifetime of study so that I may stay fully current in the practice of my profession. The full understanding of the special place of trust physicians hold in the hearts and minds of their patients. I dedicate myself to the service of all who seek my care. Congratulations to you all. Let's now hear from our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Edwin Purcell. Let's take a little trip down memory lane. Remember when we first greeted you during orientation in St. Kitts? 
Back then, today was just a far off distant dream. I said, welcome to medical school. And then I said, you have no idea what you've gotten yourselves into. I told you to look inside and find that deep altruistic desire to become a doctor, because when the times get rough, that is what will keep you going. Think of who you were then and who you are now. Think of the vast amount of knowledge you've gained and all the teachers that helped you along the way. You are our legacy. So on behalf of the faculty and administration, let me say how proud we are to have played a role in your success and offer a very heartfelt congratulations. I'm so happy with the news of your graduation. It is a very proud moment for all of us here at UMHS. Your hard work has eventually paid off. You are now officially doctors. Welcome to the family. This is the beginning of a new chapter in your lives. And you are actually going to face a lot of challenges and obstacles. But I'm sure with your hard work, you can overcome them all. Continue to be compassionate. Continue to keep working hard. You are going to achieve greater heights. Congratulations once again. Hi everyone, I really a pleasure to be able to say congratulations and to sort of see all of you in front of me here. Uh, I don't have to actually see your faces to remember the names and to remember the people and remember the smiles. And I'm sure you're all smiling pretty big right now. So uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, proud of you all. And I look forward to hearing about the next stage. So you all take care. Anyone graduating from medical school at any time during the past 15 months has done something truly remarkable. But more than that, you've proven once again that you do not need a paved road to reach your destination. Remember that because it's your best asset and good luck. Many congratulations to all of you on your graduation. Finally, all your hard work, dedication, sincerity has paid off. We at UMHS are very proud of your achievements and success. And we are confident that you would continue to make us feel proud in your future endeavors. It was pleasure meeting and teaching. I am very delighted for all of you. I wish you all the best, happiness and peace in your future life. Good luck. Hey everyone. I know graduating from medical school is hard but graduating from medical school during a global pandemic is really hard. You've all faced adversity and made it through this entire journey this whole last year and I know it wasn't easy. I wish all of you the best of luck during your next steps down your medical journey and congratulations on graduating. Hi, I'm thrilled to be part of your graduation celebration. I'm proud of what you have achieved so far. Congratulations to all the UMH's new graduates. I wish you all the very best in your career path. Congratulations! I'm here to congratulate you on behalf of the main faculty, staff, and standardized patients. You've made it. You've come a long way. I hope when you reflect back on your time at UMHS, you think fondly of the time you spent in Maine for the ICM-2 course and the Kaplan Review course whether it was during the warm, sunny weather or during the very cold winters we have had here. I'd like to share a little something with you as part of my congratulatory remarks to you. This here that you see on your screen is a picture that I took when I was last in St. Kitts. I had gone for a walk on the beach in the early morning before a conference. When I reflected on this picture, I thought how representative these three sets of footprints were. Think of yourself as being the set of footprints in the middle. To your right 
are the basic science faculty represented in these set of footprints. And to your left is the fifth main semester and your clinical faculty. I want you to remember that through your, the rest of your journey in medicine, in residency program, and in your careers, that we will always be on the sides of you. We were there for you to teach you through your semesters at UMHS. And I hope that you utilize the information that you learned and do great things once you graduate from UMHS and move on to your residency and ultimately to your career. In whatever specialty it is, whether it's surgery, pediatrics, medicine, emergency room, psychiatry, all the different specialties out there. So on behalf of the main faculty, staff, and standardized patients, I would like to leave you with a very heartfelt congratulations and all the best. Please stay in touch. Take care. Congratulations. Hello friends, this is Dr. Kristen Miller, your Alumni Association President. I wanted to say congratulations on such an incredible accomplishment. Um, probably one of the biggest days of your life. <laughs> I wanted to welcome you guys to the Alumni Association and encourage you all to come join us. Um, Facebook would be the best way to start because we wanna help you, we wanna support you. We don't want you guys just to graduate and then fall off our radar. We wanna know what you're doing. We wanna know how we can help. So congratulations, and I really look forward to getting to know you all much better in the Alumni Association group. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Our alumni organization is here to support our graduates as they continue with their careers. I urge all of you to join the association and become active members. Even as alumni, your connection with the university will continue to be important. UMHS is already an alma mater to be proud of, and it will be even more so in the years to come. So in closing, let me take a moment to give you a glimpse into our exciting plans. The university is experiencing a positive growth pattern. As our numbers grow, we will be constructing additional academic facilities including a large auditorium, additional breakout rooms for group study, more offices to accommodate additional faculty to ensure we maintain an eight to one student faculty ratio, a modern gym with an aerobics area and juice bar, as well as a state of the art student union. In order to remain cutting edge, we've been aggressively upgrading IT and audiovisual equipment on campus. This year, we will replace all our network equipment fiber optics and servers on campus, making the network more robust, reliable, and substantially faster. We recently hired eThink, a leader in the learning management system, to completely upgrade our learning management system and create a cloud-based solution which is faster, more efficient, and user-friendly. Just this week, the government of St. Kitts has given us provisional approval to build a pedestrian bridge. This has been a long-awaited request by students, and we are pleased to announce we are moving forward on it. The goal is to complete the plans this summer and obtain final approval to construct the bridge this year. In the near future, our goal is to have recognition and approvals from every state that has the ability to approve a foreign medical school. We will continue to develop additional hospital affiliations throughout the United States to provide greater clinical exposure and to provide enhanced opportunities to obtain the residencies of your choice. As you may know, our students did really well this year with the match, and I urge everyone to view our website for the listing of residencies. With all that we have done in the last 13 years, I truly believe that we are one of the best offshore medical schools. Your accomplishments will be further testimony to the quality of education at UMHS. Again, on behalf of all of us at the University of Medicine and Health Sciences, congratulations. What do you see when you look around? Are you looking for memories lost and found? And what do you see when you close your eyes? And remember the best days of our lives. Well, I see colors. Taking the pictures in my mind 
never a moment left behind and singing a song along the way making the most of every day Gonna be up to you and me. 